Good morning. Today I would like to talk a little bit about communion and have a little bit of a different view on communion, something that I believe is very powerful and it can help you to make the most of what Jesus Christ meant when he said, take this and he broke the bread and gave the wine, eat and drink in remembrance of me. What does that mean? I believe that when Jesus Christ said, eat and drink and do this in remembrance of me, he was obviously thinking that he would die and that he would be raised from the dead. And then he thought that he would be sending on high, sitting at the right hand of the Father, and he would not be physically present in a form where people can see, feel, and touch him, and that they would then eat the bread and drink the wine in remembrance of Jesus. In other words, that would be an acknowledgement that Jesus Christ is alive today, but that he has died. In other words, that the raised Jesus, whom they have seen, who they know is seated at the right hand of the Father, that he passed through death and was made alive. The disciples did not worship the death of Jesus. They were worshiping the resurrected Christ, the one who has conquered all death, the one who has brought all life. And when we take communion, we take communion from the perspective of knowing that the one that is alive has conquered death. And I think that is the crux of the whole of communion. It is we partaking of the body of Jesus. This body that we partake of was broken, it died, and it was bodily raised. And that is what communion is in. It is in our unification with the glorified body of Jesus, that we are one flesh with a glorified Jesus. This is even echoed in scriptures like Galatians chapter, excuse me, Ephesians chapter 5, where Paul says we are the body of Christ. We are the bride of the Lord. We are, we can even say, betrothed unto him, if you want to use a different language. Uh, we are one flesh with the Lord, talking about marriage, talking about unification. Now, if we ask ourselves the question uh, about the flesh of Christ, what kind of a flesh is it? What was, who is he? And what happened to him? We would say the one that's raised, that's glorified, that is above sin, above death, is the very one that passed through death. And whenever we face death in this world, we know that the body that we've been joined to is greater and more victorious than death itself. That then gives us hope and also puts us at the place where we are seeing no need to draw upon the, um, the abilities of man, our own ability to find life, to basically make a living. And I'm not talking about working. I do believe that we need to work. But when I talk about make a living is make life work or to produce life by ourselves. I see Paul doing the very same thing when, um, when he writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I read for you, it says, For I have determined not to know anything amongst you, save Christ and him crucified. I think that's a very good way where we can also look at communion. How do you know Christ and him crucified? It doesn't say there that I am knowing the cross. That's not what he's saying. The emphasis of that verse is not knowing the cross. The emphasis of that verse is knowing Christ, but we know the Christ as the one that was crucified. In other words, he passed through death and he is the Christ who we now know. I think that is what communion is all about. Whenever we partake of the communion, we partake of the body and the blood of the Lord. What that means is we are partaking of the physical body and the life that is in the resurrected Christ. That's what it is about. That's what it would signify. Life was in the blood. I mean, we can argue that. Is there blood in Jesus or not? But the typology of it all points to Jesus Christ being alive and when we partake of the communion we are partaking of the absolute new creation that there is in Christ. So we are only mindful of the cross of Christ as the point from where we are looking at who he is today which is resurrected uh, above all death, above all temptation, above all sin and that is what we are mindful of and that is what we are unified into.
I would like for you to know that you are deeply loved by God and that you are one with God in Jesus Christ. God bless.